Changing the pH of our blood plasma is not the only factor that actually influences and affects hemoglobin's ability to bind to oxygen. Another factor is temperature. So increasing or decreasing the temperature of our blood plasma can affect hemoglobin's ability to bind to oxygen and therefore affect the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve and this will be the focus of this lecture. Now before we actually discuss how increasing or decreasing the temperature affects hemoglobin, let's discuss where this increase in temperature actually comes from. So inside the cells of our exercising tissue, these exercising cells are carrying out more metabolic processes such as cellular respiration. And what that means is more thermal energy is produced as a byproduct. Thermal energy is energy that cannot be used to do any useful work. And so what the cells actually do is they release that energy into the blood plasma of the nearby capillaries. So let's take a look at the following diagram to see what exactly we mean. So we have the exercising cells found within our tissue and this is the nearby capillary that is carrying our blood plasma that contains the red blood cells and the hemoglobin within those red blood cells. Now, as these exercising cells are carrying out metabolic processes at a higher rate, they produce more thermal energy and that thermal energy transfers from a higher temperature to a lower temperature via the process of heat. And that's exactly why we sometimes refer to this thermal energy simply as heat. So as the blood plasma receives more energy from the cells, more thermal energy, it essentially increases in temperature because the particles and molecules and cells within our blood plasma gain more kinetic energy. So we increase the temperature of the blood plasma within our capillary. So now that we know where the increase in temperature actually comes from, let's discuss how our increase in temperature actually affects the ability of hemoglobin to bind to oxygen. So the question is, what would we expect to happen to hemoglobin's ability to bind to oxygen when we increase the temperature of the blood plasma that contains the red blood cells that are carrying those hemoglobin molecules? Well, when these exercising cells are carrying out more metabolic processes, that means they actually require more oxygen to create the ATP molecules via the process of cellular respiration. So that implies when these exercising muscles uh, produce more ATP, they use more ATP, so that means they need more oxygen. And so the hemoglobin inside the blood plasma must be able to unload and release that oxygen with a greater likelihood. So that also means that the hemoglobin must bind to oxygen much less likely in order for the oxygen to actually get into these exercising cells. And that's exactly why when we have a higher temperature of the blood plasma, the, hemoglo the hemoglobin becomes less likely to actually bind to oxygen and much more likely to release and unload that oxygen into this exercising tissue. So when these cells are carrying out more metabolic processes at a greater rate, we produce thermal energy and that thermal energy essentially stimulates the hemoglobin to become much less likely to bind to oxygen so that they can unload that oxygen at a greater rate so that the cells can receive the oxygen they need to continue carrying out the metabolic processes. Now the next question is how will this affect the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve? 
Well, let's take a look at the following diagram. The y-axis is the percent saturation of hemoglobin and it ranges from 0 to 100. Now, the x-axis is the partial pressure of oxygen within our tissue given in millimeters of mercury. Now, the blue curve describes our oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve at a normal body temperature of about 36.7 degrees Celsius. But the red curve describes the same exact curve, but at a slightly higher temperature. And notice that the red curve is shifted to the right compared to our left curve, uh, compared to our blue curve. And that's exactly what happens when we increase the temperature of our blood plasma. We shift the entire curve to the right. The question is why? Well, recall that at 100 millimeters of mercury, that is the partial pressure of our alveoli within the lungs. But at a partial pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury, this is the partial pressure within our tissue. Notice what the red curve tells us. It tells us that at a higher temperature given by the red curve, if we look at the uh, uh, value for the y-axis, this gives us a percentage of about 60% saturation. But the blue curve describes a percentage that is equal to about 70. So the red curve describes hemoglobin that is less likely to bind to oxygen and more likely to unload and release that oxygen to the exercising tissue. And that's exactly why our shift takes place to the right when we increase our temperature. So a higher temperature shifts the entire oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to the right. This means that more oxygen will be delivered to the exercising tissue because hemoglobin will be more likely to unload the oxygen and less likely to actually bind to that oxygen. Now, what happens if we decrease our temperature? Let's suppose our cells are now exercising less than, uh, than they normally do. And what that means is they are producing less thermal energy and so the temperature within the blood plasma of the capillary actually drops. And what that means is, if the cells are exercising less, they need less oxygen, and so the hemoglobin will be less likely to release and unload that oxygen, and more likely to actually bind to that oxygen. And that's exactly why, in such a case, when we decrease the temperature, we shift the entire curve to the left side with respect to the original blue curve. So, in this diagram, the blue curve is our normal temperature curve, but the red curve is the lower temperature. And so we shift it entirely to the left side. And at a pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury inside our tissue, at a lower temperature, the cells will carry out metabolic processes at a lower rate. They will therefore require less oxygen. And so hemoglobin will be less likely to actually unload that oxygen. And that's exactly why the red curve describes a greater percentage of saturation of hemoglobin, about 80% compared to the 70% for our normal temperature. So once again, a decrease in temperature has the opposite effect as in this particular case. It causes the hemoglobin to bind to oxygen more strongly, and this decreases the likelihood that it will unload the O2 into those tissues. And, the sh and this shifts the oxygen hemoglobin curve to the left side with respect to this original blue curve.